So we've covered a number of the standards so far, and uh, what I'm left with to go through with you is the IAS 23 and inspection, and then IFRS 16 leases. But I want to give you a glimpse of the single entity so that uh, you will now start working on it on your own as we will come back to these two standards um, later on. So that is what we want to look at today. Now, from the introduction, we set it out that companies prepare some set of financial statements. We spoke about that, the fact that we have the income statement and other comprehensive income. We come to the statement of changes in equity, SOSI, and then we come to the statement of financial position, and then the statement of cash flows. So these are the four statements that we want to prepare so far, and with the exception of these two standards, all the standards we've covered so far, any question on these guys, we should be able to solve them. So we are going to see how useful the standard is, and like I always say, every footnote is an accounting standard. In the reading footnote now, wow, because we to me it's an accounting standard already. <laughs> and we've been looking at extracts of financial statements, extracts of financial statements, but now we'll be looking at what? The full financial statement and how it goes by in relation to that. So we're going to start first with the income statement and other comprehensive income. Actually, you know the pro format already, right? So I can go straight to the question, or I should go through the pro format again. Which is which? Referral. Referral. Okay, so let's see. So in our pro forma, it's very, going to be simple here. We're going to be bringing revenue. We're going to be bringing cost of sales. Because we're going to keep it clean. And then straight up, we'll get a gross profit. Then we're going to be adding other income, like EBASE, rent income that is received will be added, any fair value gain in financial instruments carried through PL. Are you getting it? That will be brought. Also, so the rent is brought. Then, any other income that the question will specifically state, we add it to the gross profit, and that will be total income. Then, we're going to be lessing other expenses. So, now the expenses at this level is divided into what is called administration expense. We're going to have distribution expense. And then what's the third one? Admin selling and distribution. And then the third one. What? Let's see. Should be set out in the pro forma of the question I'm solving. Okay, admin distribution. Yeah. Okay, so I mean distribution, we take it out, and that gives us profit before interest and tax. Then we bring the interest, we take it out, then we get profit before tax. Then we bring our favorite guy, income tax. And then we will now get what? Profit after tax. This is the first aspect. That is the income statement. The OCI hasn't come yet. But you're not going to be picking these things like that and bring them. Happy birthday and go away. You're going to be doing workings for the revenue, possibly. You're going to be doing workings for the cost of sales. This fair value gain, you may be required, you may be doing working. Admin expenses may have to be adjusted. Distribution expense may have to be adjusted. You may have to work for interest and definitely tax. Whether I like it or not, you're going to work and working for that. 
So when we say you are going to be adjusting revenue, what is it going to be? If you remember what we did under financial instruments, I told you that if an entity sell an asset with an option to repurchase, that is not a sale, true or false? If an entity, you remember that statement? If an entity sells an asset with an option to repurchase, it is not a sale, rather it is a financial arrangement. For that reason, if it is indicated in the question that it has been included in the revenue of the entity, we need to what? Take it out of the revenue and rather take it to the statement of financial position as what? Uh, financial liability. Then we calculate the interest on that and bring it as part of what? The interest of the company. So that is one of the adjustments that you could do to your revenue figure. So anything that is included in the revenue that is not supposed to be included, we may adjust the revenue. Another thing is under IFRS 15, revenue from contract with customers. If entities sell goods and they receive the revenue but they have not finished performing the performance obligation, Sometimes the entity may include all the money in their what? Yeah. Revenue. We as accountants would have to what? Take, it, take that out and rather recognize it as what? A deferred income under current liability as well as what? Non-current liability in the statement of financial position. So these are some of the things, uh, and any other thing though, but these are the two core things that will cause us to adjust the revenue of the organization. Sales with an option to repurchase is a financial arrangement and then unsatisfied performance obligation. These two items, we're gonna be adjusting it in relation to that. So you realize that just on revenue, I've spoken about two accounting standards so far. IFRS 15, IFRS 9. Then we come to what we did in KG2, cost of sales. You may be doing workings for the cost of sales. Now, in your KG2, you remember that you brought everybody, opening stock, and purchases. <laughs> and purchases. At this level, the examiner may not go that route, but, but we can bring it. Less returns. So let me do two cash columns. Don't say KG to for no only my name. Let's return. <laughs> so purchases returns. <laughs> then let me add something here. The, the revenue aspects. Once he met, she mentioned the returns, uh, the thing came again. The third one is uh, the issue about sale. Sorry, a sale with an option to return if the sale is not done. I don't know if you get that concept. Yeah, yeah. So the company sells, but at the end of the year, if the customer hasn't used the property or customer hasn't resell the property, they are going to what? Bring it back. It means it's a sales return. For that reason, what do we do? We must take it out from what? The revenue and add that to the closing inventory because we are going to be receiving that stock. So that is the third aspect on that. Then sometimes there may be carriage on purchases. Like I said, the examiner may not go this route because this is KG2 things, but we don't know. Then we'll get, if as it, cost of goods available for sale. Then what do we do? We let closing stock. And that will give us cost of sales. But this is what you have to understand. This is what you have to understand. Depreciation may be allocated between the manufacturing and then what? The, the, uh, the, the administration. So depreciation may be allocated between cost of sales and what? Admin. Sometimes or all the time, depreciation on plants may be brought to what the cost of sales. Are you getting it? Depreciation on plants may be brought to cost of sales. Then uh, building. And those things, the examiner may ask us to what? Share it between the administration and then what? The cost of sales. So whatever the examiner says about depreciation, you know it for him. So once you're done with that, that is what will come here as what? Your cost of sales. So like I said, definitely, even if you're not doing the KG21, the examiner will give you the cost of sales in the question. 
So whatever cost of sales it gives to you in the question, when you calculate depreciation, what do you do? You add it to it, and that is the figure that you're going to be bringing here. So definitely, we're going to be doing workings for cost of sales. Then, rent income may be direct in the question. Fair value gain or loss? Sir, before I proceed, can you explain the last depreciation of plants? Yes. Yeah. It's like I'm fine. Depreciation of plants, plants and equipment, these are normally used in the production of the products. <laughs> For that reason, those depreciation is added to cost of sales. But like I said, the question may tell you how the depreciation should be what? Allocated. He will tell you that take it to cost of sales or this. So it depends on the question. But usually, depreciation of plant that you'll be calculating is supposed to be added to what? Your cost of sales. At that time, the examiner may ask you to allocate the two. Does it make sense? Yes. Then, fair value gain in financial instrument through PML. This one, you know it already from IFRS 9. So if at the end of at the beginning of the year the financial instrument is whatever ten thousand dollars, but at the end of the year it is now three thousand sorry twelve thousand five hundred, then we have a gain of what two five. five. This gain is supposed to what come here. I get it. But if it is a loss, what do we do? That means that we will still bring it like under other income categorization, but this time around it will be what? Negated. So that is the treatment about that. Then, these guys, we will be given, it will be given to us directly in the question, and the footnotes will help us to adjust them. For instance, another financial instrument issue. If an entity, let me see whether you can remember some of these things. If an entity issues debts or no notes, how are issue costs treated? If an entity issues loan notes, how are issue costs treated? Is it? It's a financial ability. The financial the issue cost. Okay, let me put it this way. If an entity issues financial or Loan notes. How do you treat the transaction cost? And then one came to us. Hey, if you are watching online, can. you do. If you say it, will be here. Now. If an entity issues it out. Good. How do we treat the financial cost? When did we do financial instruments? Sorry, yeah, transaction, transaction cost. cost. Uh -huh. It means that our post should be there. Okay. Ella. <laughs> so you debit your financial asset. Ella, your asset. He has a big. Once a machine asset, two new crowns are now kind. That means you're a liar. <laughs> an entity issues a loan note. Mm -hmm. Now, if an entity issues a loan note. Is that a financial liability, a financial asset, or a financial equity? Financial, financial liability. liability. How do you treat the transaction cost? So you less it from the... <laughs> from what? It's a financial liability. You less it from what? <laughs> so let me think about it again. You less it from what? It has to be less from what? The liability in the financial Which liability in the financial statement? <laughs> you less it from the proceeds that you had. When we were doing the calculation, I saw we less, but what exactly we less from? You didn't know. It was transaction cost we less. The 500, when we were doing the convertible loan notes, yeah. we less it. So the reason why I'm bringing this thing up is that the question we're about to solve there is something like that there. And the entity made a mistake. And you must know this principle that when it comes to financial instrument, when an entity issues a loan note, the issue cost or the transaction cost must be deducted from what? The proceeds. 
So if the entity adds the issue cost to distribution expenses or admin expenses, then you must take it out from there and rather come and deduct it from what? The proceeds. Because issue costs are not written off in the PL. However, if the entity was the one buying, entity was the one buying, then the transaction cost they incur, if they are going to be carrying it through PL, then it has to be what? Written off. Mm. Through PL. Yes, OCI you add, PNL you write it off. Okay. These are the principles of yes, as admin expense. Identity buying you can as a financial asset. Yes, because once an entity is buying a financial instrument, even if it's a low note, it's an investment. So that is what a financial asset. Mm -hmm. So we said the, the entity can decide either to carry it through PNL or through what OCI. So if it is carrying it through PL, meaning it is for trading purposes, it's for short-term reasons. For that reason, the each the transaction cost they incur will be written off in what? The income statement. But if they are, they are carrying it through OCI, then the transaction cost will be added to the financial instruments in the books of the company. So if it is uh, an appreciate it's a long term. Yes, it's a long-term goal, it's part of the long-term strategy. So the transaction cost cannot be written off. Rather, it will be added to the investment in our books. That was why I took my time to take you through standards. Because I know I'm going to get you here. Mm -hmm. And now I'm getting you already here. <laughs> All right, so why did I bring that up? So like I said, you may be doing adjustment for these two figures depending on what? The question. So if for instance the entity issues a loan note and they are adding transaction costs to admin expenses, then you have to be careful that they have done a mistake. If you don't know the entity did a mistake, let's just say one person will deal with that. That means the interest you calculate on the loan note will be wrong. The figure of the loan note you take to the balance sheet or statement of financial position will also be wrong. So you're going to be losing three Six. And if each stick is 0 0.05 poa, and that's 0 0.5 poa, the boy they man. So that's the idea. So you may be doing adjustment for those guys. Then the interest. Interest here can be in two folds. It can be interest on uh bank loan, or maybe interest on a financial instrument. What is the difference between hey, financial instruments and about power they will move? Yo, then wait. What is the difference between what's fine when it comes to issue of loan notes? Which interest comes into the uh, PL? Is it the coupon rate or the effective rate which comes into the PL? Effective coupon rate. <laughs> Why? Effective. Why? Coupon. <laughs> and you should say revision for the moment. Which comes in the you know there are two rates we are going to be using. The coupon rate and then the effective rate. Which of these two interests comes in the income statement? You said effective. Why? You said coupon. Why? What are you saying in the middle? <laughs> yes, why? Come on, come on. Does it mean you didn't understand financial instruments? That's the rate on the. the that's the rate or interest charge on the loan. Okay. That's the rate or interest charge on the loan. Uh, annual, annual rate. I mean, I the same as annual rate. Yeah, that's an uh -huh. So you when you calculate the interest on it, then you send it to the So what happens to the effective rate? Do you remember the pro forma we put down? Yes, sir. We put year, balance brought forward, interest, um payment, and then carry forward. Do you remember this? No, sir. So he what did we do? He didn't give us that. We didn't do that too. Oh. The Are you sure? Yeah. Amortized cost. No, the no. amortized cost, we solve a question with this 
If last year they were supposed to capitalize something, but they wrote it off, that means that they have reduced their profits last year. True or false? Hmm. Let me take that again. If last year they were supposed to capitalize something, but they wrote it off, meaning last year they increased their profits or did they reduce or increase? They, they reduced reduce. their profits. Yeah. For that reason, if we now find an error, what do we come and do? You add it back. The reverse is true. If they are supposed to write off something, but it was capitalized, it means they have what? Increased their profit. So when we come, we are going to be lessened. So prior period adjustment may be in the question, and chances are it may always be under the retained earnings. Any error that we have identified and we are dealing with it, that is the idea about that. Then you know the thing we mentioned transfer. From what? The revaluation surplus to the retained earning and the IAS 16. Do you remember that? Yes, so the transfer, we will do a deduction from the revaluation surplus and then what? Positive here. That means the revaluation gain would have to be brought. So revaluation gain, which you are bringing here, will be brought under what? This figure. As a positive figure there. So this place will be netted out. Then the profit for the year, wait, this figure will come under what? Retain it. Will come under retain it because it will increase our retain it. Then if not during the year the entity issue shares. So issue of what? Shares. Now, if an entity issues shares over the market value or over the nominal value, what is happening? So the nominal value of the share is $2, but they issue it at $2.5. What is happening? Are they making profit or not? Profit of what? 0.5. Profit on issue of shares, where is it taken to? Share premium. So if the company issues the shares over the nominal value, the difference, so that is why in issue of shares, you may have figures at both words. The share premium and then what? The share capital. The share capital is the nominal value that will come. The share premium is the profit on the issue. That is what comes there. Then the total is taken under the total cost. Then during the year, the entity may also have paid dividends. So any dividend the entity paid, where do we deduct it from? Where is the dividend paid from? Retain earnings. So we deduct that. So these are some of the things at this level we think that you must know about in relation to the statement of changes in equity. So when we finish, we close it up. We close it up, we close it up, we close it up. This will be the balance carry forward, and this is what goes to your balance sheets or your statement of financial position. So under equity, these closing balances are what go there. These closing balances. Indeed, if you make a mistake in the statement of changes in equity, that means you carry that same mistake into the balance sheet. And remember, ticks will be given here in the balance sheet ticks. That means what we did go we did go also. So you gotta be careful about the treatment of the items. Most importantly, what students struggle with is the transfer and then the issue about issue of shares. So once you're able to because prior period adjustment to be directly stated and you should know whether it reduce your profit or increase your profit, you do the opposite here and that is it. So that is the statement of changes in equity. Then the last one is the financial position. I'm not going to give you pro forma for that. When we are solving the question, we will just uh, see how we go. We bring our assets divided into non-current and current. Then we bring equity and liability. So these are the equity items. And then we bring the liability also, both current and non-current. So that's it about income statement, OCI, and then financial position.